Marvel Phase 4 has been a hit and miss for many Marvel fans. The big grand ending to the Infinity Saga and Endgame was going to be tough for any phase to top. However, this phase introduced fans to some of the biggest and most relevant storylines. I want to recap this phase and give my overall rankings for Phase 4 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This is my personal list, so I'd like to hear your list down in the comments below. The Eternals was my least favorite project by the MCU in this phase. I understood Kevin Feige was trying to build hype with Chloe Zhao's Oscar win, but it just didn't work for me. This film and project would have been better reserved for a later phase or even as a TV show. The film was sandwiched between No Way Home and Shang-Chi, both better projects and that didn't overpromise on the story. The characters were all likable and could return, but the story just really couldn't juggle their narratives as fluidly as I like. The crew might have looked well together, but the film lacked a real heart at the center as well. Next is Thor and Love and Thunder. It was It's, it's just a bad experience overall. Takia Wakiti revived Hemsworth and the character of Thor a bit during Thor Ragnarok. That film was very entertaining and I think it did a good job blending with the proper for MCU. That wasn't the case in the sequel. Thor felt too intrusive in this film and joked around way too much for my taste. I understand Taiki has got a sense of humor, but she really needed to do a solid filter to muck out any of the off-putting or out-of-place scenes. There was a laundry list of problems that I had with this film. The storyline with Mighty Thor and Jane Foster wasn't very strong as well. The delivery might have not been there or the script wasn't there. I'm not quite sure, but it just didn't blend. I think this film was almost a reverse of the problems of Thor's Dark World. It didn't have any color, didn't have any fluff to it. This movie felt a little too fluffy. It felt like it didn't have that good emotional tie in the very center. We're close to it, Marvel. Just, just get somewhere in the middle. Next on my list is Black Widow. And that film's main problem was that it just took too long to come out. The crew behind the film can agree along with many fans. The film, however, did give fans Yelena Belova as the new Black Widow and did introduce some new elements to the MCU. However, I think most fans would agree that the portrayal of the Taskmaster was a bit lackluster. I think if this film was simply earlier fit in the MCU's timeline, the story would have had less pressure mounted on it to follow Avengers Endgame. I think the idea and storyline would have been something better suited for a TV series as well. Maybe the film just didn't have enough time to flesh out those characters. I did however like the Red Guardian and Yelena Belova and I can't wait to see them come back in the Thunderbolts. As for this movie, it didn't have massive expectations and still under delivered. Next on my list is She-Hulk and that was a show that had big promise in my opinion. Jennifer Walters is a character that breaks the fourth wall on occasion. A good concept and a good thing to explore in a TV show and Taina Maslany did well with the role and definitely has a future in the MCU. The show had some bright spots mixed with some pointless stories lines and at times just cringe moments. The story at the end was a big mess and while that was Marvel's intention I guess, I couldn't take myself out of the nonsensical conclusion however. The scar scene at the very end was just a throw in scene and it felt so off and random and it represented the sheer randomness of the first season overall. Moments like Daredevil returning and even some of Emil Blonsky's episodes helped carry the show towards the end. But the show lacked a strong structural story to spine everything together. She-Hulk might benefit from its switch to a movie Movie role, but I hope that Masolani gets another shot at the role. Werewolf by Night is my next thing on this list. Werewolf by Night gives us a good look and preview into the darker themes of the MCU. I thought the special presentation worked well for Marvel and Michael Gigiano did a good job on directing. He's typically the one that's composing the music for the films, so it's nice to see him in a director's chair for a change. I like how the show takes advantage of the horror elements and is shot in black and white, which is really cool and really just gives it a Halloween vibe. And it gives Marvel a nice Halloween tradition and they can kind of come back to every night now and then. It's low pressure, it's an hour special, and it's nothing the actors really can't commit to. And that includes Laura Donnelly's Elsa Bloodstone, and she was a highlight of the show for me as well. The success of the show just paves the path very cleanly for Blade and possibly Black Knight. Who knows, maybe we might get them in a special presentation before we get a proper movie or TV series. Next on my list is Miss Marvel. And Miss Marvel was a fun surprise for me. I liked the high school elements and Imani Vellani did a wonderful job playing Kamala Khan. The show had this nice charm and fun energy that she Hulk lacked and that Moon Knight kind of lacked and it was just a nice soft middle between both of them. The cast of characters including Kamala's family was just a good charm to the show. Storyline around the Bengals will play a big role for the MCU but it was fun getting to understand and learn about Kamala Khan's power alongside her. The season also felt very self-contained so you won't really need to watch every MCU project prior to this. That's because Kamala does a good job being a fan of the MCU world and explaining the past events. I can't wait to see her appear in the Marvels and it'll be fun to see what what they do for season two, especially after the events of that movie. What if season one was a fun hypothetical animated adventure? Getting to explore what if scenarios in the MCU was a very fun and enticing idea. With the multiverse saga in full swing, it was very fun exploring some of the bigger consequences meshing universes in that TV show. Highlights of the season were Ultron and Doctor Strange's episode. 
I would very much recommend this show for its unique setting and premise. The show is very successful and so successful that Phase 5 will feature a season 2. Tons of storylines can be explored on this show, free from the MCU's confinements. Comment below and share some what ifs you'd like to see in season 2. Moon Knight was the first MCU project for Oscar Isaac. Mark Spector suffers from multiple personality disorder after a traumatic brain damage while in military service. He was saved by Khonshu, the Egyptian god, and became the champion for him. He is in conflict with Arthur Haro, a religious zealot and cult leader, attempting to bring back a malevolent goddess. I found the show pretty adventurous and exciting. The show was a mind twister with some of the psycho elements. The fight sequences when Moon Knight gears up are brutal and the show did a good bit with the violence. The show also let Oscar Isaac explore the multiple personalities that this character suffers. Mr. Knight was really cool too. There's just so many highlights of the show and I can't wait to see what season 2 brings. The overall story was pretty grandual and pretty big, but it did its job into introducing god deities within the MCU. And next on my list is Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. The movie was kind of a letdown, but didn't come across like other MCU projects that underdelivered. Sam Raimi had the vision and the style all over his film, and while the film did overpromise a bit on the story elements, it didn't overpromise on the look and the style of the film. The Illuminati fight was brutal too, and something only Sam Raimi can pull off. The story surrounding the multiverse is something worth exploring. I was expecting a bit more madness and a bit more multiverse exploring, and a nice crossover with an animation world would have been a great treat. However, I like the inclusion of variants and the ideas surrounding the project. I just wish the third act was a bit stronger on the plot side. I enjoyed the film, but it could have been a bigger hit in my opinion. Elizabeth Olsen's inclusion made sense and it was nice to tie in some of WandaVision, but her story elements were also left a bit to be desired, but it didn't take away from my enjoyment of the movie and I would definitely recommend it. Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special treated MCU fans to the first Christmas special on Disney+. Plus. I enjoyed the show's tone overall, and it was nice to have a nice cool down before Phase 4. Peter Quill is still sad after losing Gamora during the events of the Infinity Saga. His newly found half-sister Mantis and Drax go out their way to try to cheer him up. I like these two's dynamics, and it was really fun to see them interacting with normal people, and especially over at Hollywood. While the plot wasn't anything too complicated, it was still a good message of trying to spread some Christmas joy and cheer, especially with some people who, you know, are missing certain other people that might not be around and I think that message was really strong in this. Kevin Bacon's cameo wasn't as big as I thought it was going to be however I did enjoy his inclusion to the project hopefully this is a solid direction for the MCU going forward. Hawkeye was a fun and surprising show for me. The timing of the release was perfectly timed during Christmas time and those Christmas elements were fun. I love the premise of the show too just an Avenger trying to make it home for Christmas. Hawkeye gets in conflict with local clan of criminals and is face to face with the Ronin costume. Ronin was a persona and violent persona that Hawkeye Hawkeye took on during the blip. Turns out Kate Bishop accidentally found him and Hawkeye found her too. Haley Steinfeld was a perfect cast for Kate Bishop and her constant bickering with Hawkeye was a good theme throughout the show. Kate's got her own family problems and related to the Kingpin too. It was just fun to see both of these characters try to solve each other's problems as partners. I'm hoping we see more of these two and Lucky the Pizza Dog as well. It just had a nice good charm to it and if you watch it especially during Christmas time I think over time it's going to age very well. WandaVision was a nice and unique take on Wanda Maximoff's character. The show, being the first among Disney Plus MCU projects, really dives into the inner trauma and conflict within Wanda. Her losses in previous films were explored in the project as well. I think the show did a great job letting Olsen carry the character through changing themes week to week. The other characters introduced to the show also played a good role. WandaVision also tied in some of Darcy from the Thor franchise to connect the MCU even further. Monica Rambo also had a good introduction to the MCU, stepping toe to toe with the eventual Scarlet Witch. The show was so successful, the main villain, Agatha Harkness will get her own spin-off show. As for Elizabeth Olsen, she has a massive future in the MCU and this show just scratched that surface. This is probably one of the many spots that we could disagree on the list, but I really liked Falcon and the Winter Soldier. The show was more of my cup of tea in terms of action and plot. I'm a sucker for political thrillers, what can I say? Well, if the show was a slow start, it carried a good plot forward week to week and seeing Sam Wilson get his suit at the very end after the conflict he faced was so satisfying. Isaiah Bradley's inclusion was also a very good catalyst for Wilson's character. Bucky also went through a good progression overcoming the trauma from his actions as the Winter Soldier in the past. Introducing a violent and failed successor to the last Captain America was a really good idea, and this portrayal gave me Homelander vibes, so it'll be very interesting to see where that character goes moving forward. Bucky Barnes and Sam Wilson are Steve Rogers' successors, and will be heavily involved in future phases. I think the show will be one many fans will revisit years later. Shang-Chi was a wonderful and almost classic MCU film. Classic meaning in the sense of how the story was placed within the grandeur MCU, kind of like Iron Man. Iron Man comparisons might be a little too bold, but the plot felt very isolated, much like that movie. 
The film played its seclusion from the grand MCU very well too. The film did its solid job with the characters and plot within its own story. Simu Lamu has a nice charm as the character of Shang-Chi and will only grow in the role, I believe. Conflict in the film revolved around the family is just hard to beat. The Ten Rings will also play a big role, not just the clan and group, but the literal rings themselves. Shang-Chi too will be coming sooner than later. I also liked Aquafina's inclusion and I look forward to seeing how the dynamics between those two characters will go in the second movie and how that movie will carry into Kang Dynasty. Loki Season 1 was a fun and fascinating ride across the lore and universe we know as the MCU. Loki was a great and unique approach when it came to time travel. The inclusion of TVA, He Who Remains, Mobius, and Sylvie were all highlight for the season for me. The show introduced us to the idea of variants and the sacred timeline. The show plays such a big role in the bigger multiverse saga. Loki Season 1 ended on such a cliffhanger and Kang will be an ongoing threat for the trickster god. Tom Hiddleston is most likely at the peak in his terms of popularity in the MCU as the character of Loki. Remobius and Loki will have their own problems with Kang still holding power over the TVA. Season 2 is already in the works and there is no doubt there is going to be a bigger plot to drive that season forward. Wakanda Forever was the sequel to a solo Avengers film to end all sequel to solo Avengers movies. Wakanda Forever had such a massive undertaking not only being a sequel but with dealing with the passing of Chadwick Boseman, Namor's introduction to the MCU, and the furthering of Val's schemes in the background. But the film did all those things while being such an emotional ride. Seeing all the characters taken to Chala's death was a tearjerker but only made the message of the overall film stronger. Shuri's arc and being intertwined with Namor's vision was a highlight of mine. Teenage Huerta and Latia Wright had good chemistry in the film, being part from different nations. While the easter eggs didn't really drop as much as fans hoped, the film was just solid in itself. I'm anticipating a third film so it'll be very interesting to see where they take the Black Panther next. Before I give my final thoughts, I'd like for you to give this video a thumbs up and hit that like button. Drop a sub and help me get that subscribers number going up. And the final film of this list will be Spider-Man No Way Home. Such a treat of a film for Spider-Man fans from so many generations. It was likely the biggest movie event for a superhero film since Avengers Endgame. Bringing back the other Spider-Man during its multiverse saga was a genius move for Marvel. The film almost felt like a Spider-Man origin story for Tom Holland's variant too. Peter Parker went through such traumatic experiences, but it mirrored the origins of his comic book counterpart. Seeing him go from having an advanced tech suit to knitting his own suits in his own apartment in the middle of New York was really humbling. I look forward to seeing if the other Spider-Man return in future MCU or multiverse projects. As for Holland, I doubt he's going to be close to done with the role. No Way Home just over delivered on everything and I think that the story elements, the inclusion of Doctor Strange ties directly well with Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness and of course that ties in with the incursions. Seeing Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield return in the role and even the villains was just a nice, nice treat for any Spider-Man fan. And as somebody who went to see the original Spider-Man in theaters in 2002, it was like you watch your characters grow up before your eyes. So that was my longest list in a while, but it was a worthwhile one to recollect my thoughts on the overall phase. Phase 4 wasn't a home run, but I think most fans will look back into the humble beginnings and remember some of the highlights. Phase 5 is expected to bring back a lot of these characters, but now the goal will be to intertwine them directly with Kang and the multiverse saga threat. Loki is ahead of the curve plot-wise, but it will take time for others to group and form a new Avengers. I look forward to see the projects Phase 5 will bring. The conclusion of that phase will warrant another list, but tell me in the comments your Phase 4 rankings. I look forward to chatting with you guys about Phase 4 and all things Marvel Cinematic Universe universe down there. Thanks for watching this video and I hope you stuck around long enough to drop a like. If you did subscribe, tell me in the comments below. And share your thoughts on topics like this one and others by clicking on the right side of your screen. I appreciate your support and this has been Joel from Real Talk Movies. See you soon.